to the test. Tie your napkin round your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. So do you <laughs> all <laughs> Why, well, we all need <laughs> to serve. <laughs> Try the grey stuff, it's delicious. Don't believe me, oh, yeah. ask the <laughs> <they can see. laughs> That was our intro music for everyone. We're so glad y'all are joining us. <laughs> we'll explain a little bit about that here in a second. So um, welcome to another Gentilee episode. We are so excited that you are here this evening, afternoon, evening. Um, my name is Jenny Long. And I'm Celie Clark. And, and we, we are, are Gentilee. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did practice. I we need did. a countdown. I need a cue. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Jenny oh, usually sure. uses her elbow. Yeah. That's usually what she does when we're in person. If you don't high five, she'll elbow you. You can ask we, we have Justin Chando. <laughs> well, we are instructional technologists with Eagle Mountain Saginaw Independent School District, which is a little bit north of Fort Worth, Texas. And we have been um, chatting with some of our friends and lately we have had uh, quite a few guests from the UK from far, far away. And we are so excited to bring them here with this platform. And so tonight um, is another wonderful evening that we have James Prothero and Chris Gerard with us this evening. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, we practiced quite a bit on the last names too, but um, <laughs> so they are going to share with you how they are um, getting along through this time of remote learning and the tools that they're using with their students and some really great ideas that we hope will benefit, uh, be a benefit to you and your students. But um, we met James and Chris when we were at BET, so another met at BET experience, and so. Again, we can't say enough about the Microsoft Educator community and, and the family that we are. And we feel the same with um, these two amazing gentlemen, that they are just part of our family. And we got to hang out with them when we were at VET. And we learn from them every day. And we want to be able to um, introduce them to you. And hopefully, you will learn something from them as well. So super excited to have them here with us this afternoon. And we're going to get started with James. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. and kind of share some things with us that he um, has been using in his classroom. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Sally. Uh, it's been amazing. Thank you very much for uh, for inviting me on on the uh, show today. Um, I'm James from um, from South Wales, so I live in Cardiff. Um, I'm an assistant head teacher at a school called Darren Park Primary School, um, and I also work for a regional sort of consortia as a digital learning officer, so supporting schools with with technology and, and that type of thing. But I'm really here to talk about how we've been using uh, Minecraft Education Edition to really support learners uh, at this this time of, of remote learning um, in lots of different ways, really. Um, to engage, yes, but also to develop knowledge, skills, to, to a, a really immersive experience. Uh, and not only that, how we've been supporting teachers as well to, to take the tool and really give them, put the tool, it's fine to put the, those tools in their hands, but really developing professional development um, and getting teachers to grips with, with the tools and what a fantastic tool it can be. So um, in terms of supporting learners, we've been using one of the really cool things now with Minecraft Education Edition is the fact that through the join code experience, you can get learners collaborating, you know, from different in different houses in different towns, but through through sharing that join code. So it's amazing, you know, we can so we've shared we've used teams as a school to share uh, a world and then share a, a join code, and we keep that world open for a certain amount of time during that day where they can collaborate. It's a lovely opportunity for them to, you know, to really touch base with with their friends in a really safe environment because they're all locked in with with the tenancy that they log into Minecraft with. You know, they can use the chat, they can talk, they can really, you know, make sense of things. So that's been really cool. And we've had some really interesting, so we've been doing a project uh, with them recently called Amazing Architecture. So what the children have done is they've looked at um, amazing buildings from around the world and really thought about in terms of architecture how the buildings were designed what the inspiration was that type of thing 
um, and then using Sway to create sort of multimedia presentations, uh, and then planning and building within Minecraft Education Edition. Um, and some of the buildings that they, it's really, really blown me away. So for example, and I thought very sort of poignant for the time that we are, um, you guys remember the Excel center that we were for Beck? Well, um, obviously, uh, it's now turned into the Nightingale Hospital, so a field hospital. Well, two of our learners decided, they, they, they researched it, they looked into what it was before, what it was now, and they built the Nightingale Hospital within this amazing buildings. They wow. used armor stands um, for the scrubs to put those on. They, you know, it was just brilliant. They, they created like the COVID world. But like the conversations that we were able to have with the children as a result of that, you could see, you know, such deep level thinking going on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, don't get me wrong, there were some children who, who uh, researched football stadiums and that type of thing as well and created those. But it just speaks to children at so many different levels. I think that's what's, you know, that was really sort of uh, hit me from, from that. Um, I think I think it also helps them understand the situation so much more. Yeah, no. You know, like um, I loved Stephen Reed's Minecraft World with the refugees, like yeah, just okay. to give like students a look into the life of them. And the same with with COVID. Uh, you know, a lot <laughs> of our kiddos are just at home and they yeah. don't even understand what's going on around the world or how this is a pandemic. So I think that's a great way that, to do that. It's, I think. I say it's a difficult enough time, isn't it, for us to make sense of what's going on. So anything we can do to sort of bring our learners together to try mm -hmm. and help them. Um, but of course, you know, not all learners are able to access the world at that time. So the amazing thing really as well is to export in that world, we can place that in, in teams so they can access it, you know, because a lot of, lot, of, lot of children might have one device and their parents might need it for working from home and they might have siblings. So they can do that then uh, at a time and then use teams to share back their, uh, their portfolios, their book and quill. So they've still got that connection. So um, that's worked really, really well. And it's my first experience really of using Minecraft in a, in a remote sort of um, environment. Uh, it's just amazing now through, you know, through the joint code and through export in the world that we can try and make things, I guess, as normal as possible for, for learners to try and, and, and give them that experience. It's really helped change parental attitudes as well, uh, because when parents can see the type of, of activities that children are engaging in, mm -hmm. it really helps them to understand that, yes, Minecraft is a game, but it's so much more than that mm -hmm. as well if it's used properly. I love well. that statement. That's perfect too. right there. Mm -hmm. so Minecraft is I, a game, but yes, you can use it in so much more and actually learn from it. So I think that's mm -hmm. very powerful. So in terms of, of that, we're really lucky in Wales that we've had um, Minecraft licenses for a while now that Welsh Government have, have, have bought for, for all learners. But obviously with these, with these licenses, it's really important that educators know how to support their learners using these tools. You know, it's all very well to say here's Minecraft, but you know, how are we using it to really develop effective learning and teaching? So I've been really fortunate. I've been working with Minecraft and um, with Microsoft and Welsh Government uh, and, uh, and Microsoft Partners Prodigy Learning and um, to develop Minecraft Learning Centres, which we've been piloting in Wales this year. So they've, they've been amazing educators from, from all around Wales. Um, and up until this, this point in time, um, teachers can go, they can visit the learning centre. They do a two day programme, um, which is very much action research based. They'll, they'll go away. Some, some teachers have never used Minecraft before. Some are a little bit more experienced. They go back to their school um, with a challenge to complete by session two. And they, by that time, they come back and they, they learn how to do things like code within Minecraft, um, use Minecraft in specific subjects, sort of, you know, sort of English and numeracy and that type of thing. But that, so those sessions have been running really, really effectively and the numbers, well, every session has been full, but obviously now face-to-face -face training has stopped. So we've been working with uh, with Prodigy Learning, with Welsh Government, with Minecraft. Uh, so our Welsh Government platform is called Hub. Uh, so through Hub, we've created using Teams Live webinars where um, 
certain schools, the Minecraft centers have shared distance learning activities that they've done with their children uh, using the world they've used, the planning that they've done as well. So they've shared these with teachers in a sort of um, hour and a half session, you know, so uh, they can ask questions, they can do those types of things. But we've also, using Teams, um, continued running the Minecraft two-day sessions that were meant to run. So we've sent the invites, and I think, to be honest, it could only be more effective because the, the resources that we've had to create now, you know, they'll only be useful in future when people want to go. You, you know what it must be like when you've done some training with staff, they go away and sometimes they think, oh, I forgot that bit. So at least now we're recording everything. We'll have mm -hmm. all this in future trainings that they'll have to sort of use as that point. So, so it's really, really exciting. And I think, you know, building on those experiences, helping teachers really understand how they can unlock the potential in their learners by using such a powerful tool as Minecraft in a correct way, coupled with really effective teaching and learning. You know, I'd, I've got to say, out of all the trainings that I've ever done, the feedback for this has been off the scale, you know, from people who've never used Minecraft. I love that moment where someone who's never used Minecraft before just places the first block and then oh, oh yeah i can see this and when we tell teachers after sort of 30 minutes okay stop now think about it they don't want to and you think 30 minutes ago you were reluctant to start but now you know so it, and i've never honestly in my experience i've never known a tool as effective as as that really in 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 facilitating those sort of experiences mm -hmm. Uh, the well, first time, oh, go ahead. The first time we went to a Minecraft training, Ginny is not a gamer at all, and she was scared to death. And she was like, "Oh my goodness, I have to figure out how to play to be a <laughs> Minecraft trainer." But she had that exact moment, James, where she was able to put a block down, and she was like, "Okay, I can do this." And then like was able to move forward. So I was like, "Yes, yes, we've got this." Yeah, that's so important because we're not gamers, you know. <laughs> We're never going to be as good as our learners at using Minecraft, but we're educators so we can facilitate those experiences. And you just need that basic knowledge of, of how it works, really. My children will say to me, if I'm building with them at the same time, oh, can you build this wall over there? Can you sort of break anything? No, you're, you're in my space. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm absolutely fine with that. But, you know, I don't take it. The, the, the Minecraft courses in the Mecca are really good as well. They've got yeah, yeah. eight, eight different courses, and they're really fun. Because I'm like that as well. I've not really... You know, I'm starting to do the courses as I've had more time, but um, it brings back to the days of when I was a kid with Lego, and I always used yeah. to stick a couple of bits together and go, well, "What do I do right now?" <laughs> but I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm getting better, but it's really good because there's so many different uh, lessons on the Minecraft things. Like the Mindful Night is a great introduction oh, to Minecraft, brilliant. and you've yeah. got a got a story to kind of follow. So it's a nice mm. way to kind of ease people into the world of yeah. Minecraft. So, James, Neil was asking, are these learning centers um, available anywhere else other than Wales? Because I know Salim and I would love to, when I told her about that the other day, we were talking, she's like, I want to go to this. How do we yeah. get involved? So, so is it just? So, currently, um, we're piloting them in Wales. So I think it's, the, as far as I'm aware, it's the first time um, in the world anything like this has been attempted. Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, watch this space going forward. But I know um, it's taken, obviously, a lot of um, support from Welsh government who have been mm -hmm. amazing. You know, they've been behind it 100 percent. And it has taken it's probably been three years. It started off as a pilot project where schools were able to. Um, well, some schools were chosen to trial using Minecraft in this way. They created sort of case studies and resources and shared that practice. So it hasn't just been a decision to start them. You know, they've they've really invested time in teachers' professional development mm -hmm. and and actually time in training those schools because um, this has been the first year we had to make sure that the five learning centres in Wales were actually able to or could facilitate that learning or had the capacity to to do it. You know, but hopefully you know going forward who who knows really the sky's the limit it's been the most successful thing i feel i've ever been involved mm -hmm. with you know so it's mm -hmm. been, been brilliant i have a question about it yeah. are you when when they go to the pd the teachers from other schools are they able to get the worlds that other teachers have made yes so oh. um so i deliver the training with sarah snowden 
um, who's also a Minecraft global mentor and trainer uh, from Prodigy Learning. And she's developed a team. So when um, the practitioners who attend the courses, when they come, they get assigned uh, um, to each team, sorry. Um, so we can contact them, they can contact us, but any worlds that we share and they share, we share through there. On top of that, um, because Welsh Government are going to really support in teachers trying to get these things out there, on our national platform hub, they're actually creating a section at the moment where uh, any worlds, any resources the teachers have done, they can access. Uh, because what we find, uh, you know, is um, teachers, I don't know if, if you find the same thing, sometimes we never think things are good enough to share. So there's a reluctance sometimes. So we're saying to teachers, we don't want amazing, fantastic, golden, shiny examples. We want real examples that mm -hmm. another teacher could take and think, okay, I'm going to differentiate this from my learners. You know, so I thought, you know, so sharing realistic things, you know, where you know, there are broken parts of the world, there are things that need changing. Mm -hmm. But things that teachers are taking time to plan properly, I think people get mm -hmm. a lot from from that and you're not starting from scratch you know as as chris said there's so many you know example lessons now within playcraft learn as well you know the mm -hmm. playcraft Learn site um like the minecraft dedicated site is amazing in terms of the range of things that it is there so coupled with that the resources teachers in wales are creating um hopefully we'll have sort of an abundance of you know of amazing practice going on that that we'll be able to share going forward mm -hmm. that's awesome well, you've inspired us. I know that's something that we need to do more. And we just kind of opened it up with our students this year. So I kept telling my son, I was like, I need to get you on the computer and just get you in Minecraft EDU and play and you know learn. And so I'm going to put that on my goal for um, next week for sure so we can get I'm him so in there. I was so excited and... seeing your tweets when you started you. So I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, thank you, James, for sharing that. And I know we're going to keep coming back to you because um, that is great information about Minecraft EDU and how you're sharing those codes and how Sarah asked, can kids yeah. easily join a world together from home? So that's different right now because we're at home. So talk to us a little bit about that, how they join with that code across. So uh, when a teacher uh, or an educator sets up that world, um, they can click host and they create a join code. Now that join code can be shared. So as long as that world is being hosted by an educator and is, is live and is running, the children would um, type the code in and they go straight in. You know, so, um, and I know uh, the Minecraft teams who play Craftload have been tweeting um, a remote distance learning um, guide to, to these type of things mm -hmm. as well. And there's some really, really good videos and help guides in there. Um, actually, you know, just follow up play craft learn on twitter and you'll get those links you know straight away awesome. they're retweeting them all the time i think it might even be pinned you know to, mm -hmm. to, to the top at the moment but um okay. yeah so obviously i don't forget as well that by exporting that world and putting that somewhere like teams or whatever whatever platform the learners are using they can access it in in that way too perfect perfect so Definitely check out Playcraft Learn on Twitter and all of the resources there. And then the MEC also, lots of courses um, that you can learn and go through to uh, get caught up on the Minecraft EDU. So we'll definitely check those out. And Celine and I might have to share some worlds with each other. And um, we have a friend, Craig McBain. He's been building all kinds of things and amusement parks and just all kinds of great things as, as you know, during this time too. So love hearing that and love hearing supporting your your uh, learners through all of that and training your teachers so thank you for sharing Thanks. um all right so i think now we're going to jump over to chris and oh and definitely go and follow james there's his twitter handle as well and find him on twitter and connect with him he is um doing amazing things as you can as you can uh, see and you've heard so we're going to pass it on to chris so chris go ahead and uh Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Flipgrid and Teams. Yep, so my name is Chris Gerrard. Uh, I'm an additional support needs educator from uh, just outside Glasgow, Scotland. I work in a school called uh, Lanark Grammar. Um, so I've, I've cha I changed jobs in the summer. I used to be what's called a, a, a SENCO or a, a head of support for a faculty head of support for learners. I used to so oversee um, arrangements for students. Um, 
working with staff and colleagues, but I've decided to maybe to move back into the classroom just last summer. Um, and I really enjoyed it because it's meant I've got the opportunity to work with students more hands-on and using tools like Flipgrid and Teams. Uh, the students I work with are, they, they mainly have autism spectrum condition, but also maybe some co-occurring uh, co -co difficulties such as uh, dyslexia and ADHD and things like that as well. So technology is, is so important to, to these students. Uh, Flipgrid's been a, a real game changer for my, for my students in my class for the last sort of six months or so because um, it, I'd started using, I'd been interested in using it, but I tried it a couple of times in my previous school and I hadn't really got, I hadn't got that far with it, but then I started just trying to, to use it. I thought, I've seen some really good stuff on Twitter and the, 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 the Flipgrid team are so active and promoting things and I thought, this looks amazing, I'm really, I need to try this. I started trying to use it with my students, but the big thing I did with but with my students was not use the camera because they don't want to be on the camera. They, they, you know, they, they just don't want to do that. But when I started showing them features like the whiteboard, the blackboard, uploading images, doing their own drawings, um, they, they, just, they just took to it immediately. And it was just great to see, to see them producing some really good work as well. Because um, I think that's the thing with Flipgrid is that everyone just assumes it's like Snapchat for education or you know TikTok for everyone mm -hmm. to be dancing. And, and it's, it's not like that at all. As I say, I've got students recording loads of different videos and their face, uh, their identity's never never in the, the actual video. Sometimes their voice isn't even in it. It's just these images with text. Um, but it's a really good way to engage the students and to get them to show you what they, they know. And what, what I really like about it as well is that it's it's so it's inclusive and accessible for everyone. So it's like, you know, you literally just have to press the camera and just, you know, say something or show something or, you know, draw something or bring up a picture. It's just it's so easy to do that. And um, so what I was getting the students to do where I, I teach uh, literacy and I teach uh, ICT. So with literacy, I was getting them to do like book summaries. So it was a great way to, to check their understanding of what we'd read through by getting them to make a little a little video of it. We did things like we used Bunsy. Um, so we'd get Bunsy to make maybe the, the images that they need for their video, and then they would, they would uh, put them up, and that, that worked really well. So again, they'd make this little story out of maybe three or four Bunsy slides and just upload it to, to Flipgrid. What, what I'd then get the students to do is I would um, get them to, to embed into OneNote. So they have, so, so the way I, I'd say to the kids, it's kind of like almost like an interactive notebook. So when they go into a page, it might have like three or four videos just embedded there by using the Flipgrid embedding feature and just embed it in there. And it looks, it looks really good, you know? So, so that's, that's been, a, it's been a great tool to use. And um, the students, the students I work with just now have not really engaged with remote learning. Um, for a variety of different reasons. But the one the one place I have been using it quite a lot recently is with my Cub Scouts group. Um, so we've been using Teams and Flipgrid to keep to keep going and doing challenges and things like that. Because it's obviously quite a challenging thing to keep Scouts going because the real focus is being outdoors and doing outdoor activities. Even even the the sort of the slogan is really, really, really indoors since 1908 and it's all of a sudden you're in indoors all the time. So what we've been trying to get the the, the, the Cub Scouts to do is uh, work on the the badges in Flipgrid. So we post them in Teams. Um, we take the the announcement feature we put up once a week to show what they they need to do for the uh, for that week's tasks, and then we get them to to produce it in Flipgrid. Um, the work so each each. Um, each badge has a, a Flipgrid topic and they can just drag down and work at them. And the other thing we tried to do was not put a time limit on it, just let them work on them at their own pace and just add content and they can add as many videos as they like. So that's worked, that's worked really well. So wow. Chris, Neil has a question. Um, Flipgrid is still very new for us. I've recorded a few videos, emailed the code out to everyone and had limited responses. Any advice on how to get uh, students to engage more? So I know that's something that you're struggling with too, but do you guys have any suggestions on things that have worked that you've seen really get the kids drawn in? I think maybe just keeping it. So I, I always try and the things that's worked with the Cub Scouts is I always do my own video. So the, the, the one we're working on just now is the book um, the book reader badge. Where the first part of it is you have to pick six books that you've read and enjoyed and kind of show them who wrote them and why you enjoyed them, just very quick summaries. So I just did a Flipgrid video where I, I put an image of the book cover up and then just said a wee bit and just some any video that I asked them to do, I've made I've made a video, we did the home help badge, 
whereas to get them to go and help around the house. So I filmed myself hoovering and doing the dishes and things like just you know silly things. But I think if they see you doing it, it's um, it's you know that maybe inspire them to take you know to take on board and do it. But I, th I think maybe keeping you know if, to get the students to engage, keep it really simple. You know, just uh, maybe it is just to say one thing, or maybe it's to show it, show it, show an image and tell us one thing about that or, or, or something like that so keep the actual sort of the video really really simple in terms and be really specific about what you want from the video so mm -hmm. say i'd love to see you you know say this or maybe take a photo of your work and you know talk talk us through what you've done even just for 30 seconds mm -hmm. i know my son's teacher has like she's um asked them to do a joke of the day or I know um, my, my other daughter's doing the would you rather, you know, just things to get them to think, um, would you rather this? And there was like four things they could choose. And then my daughter's like, well, I'm going to answer all four. And so she's yeah, through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I love well. all of them. I sat down with my husband the other night and just went through all of them and showed them to him. And I was like, it's hysterical. And I love that you have that myflipgrid.com where those videos will stay with those students. And that's like their portfolio. So mm -hmm. as gets older i'm like she has all of this to go back and especially during this time right now that we're in to listen to their reflection about what they're going through or you know and getting them to express themselves it's just an amazing platform to get them to yeah. express whether it's drawing or taking pictures of something or you know picture of themselves or just speaking it's just it's not unbelievable and i saw this morning you tweeted that um about your uh, playlist yeah, yeah. So uh, now that they've introduced the screen recording feature in Flipgrid, it's made it such a, a great tool for te teaching as well so, and, and training and things like that. So I'm, I'm finding that you know if I want to record a video to share share with my, my colleagues and stuff about how to do things, the simplest way to do it is just go straight into Flipgrid, hit the screen recording feature, and away I go, and then I can send it out any mm -hmm. any way I want and share it to Teams or whatever so it's, it's really, really good that you can do that so what i've just done is i've created a, a grid called my videos and then i'm just each topic is um, a different area so i've got a topic on flipgrid a topic in teams and then i can just add lots of little bite-sized videos and um, so i'm trying to add like little kind of one minute videos i tend to find that they're the ones that are most effective rather than videos that are maybe like 10 minutes long where it, it loses the staff and you can skip through it so um I think that just you know keeping really bite-sized videos that shows one step or one thing works really well, and I really like I really like the way Flipgrid arranges it in the grid as well, so it's really visual and it looks really appealing, um, and then you don't have the distractions of other platforms or other videos. Or I'll go to that other video or adverts mm -hmm. or anything like that. So I like that fact about it. I covered you up. Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> we're, we're both to put a um, comment in we there. Should, we shouldn't know, both uh, be able to have controls at the same time. That's what happens. Yeah, she's yeah. my boss. Yeah, thank you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea, though, and it gives teachers one spot to go to find all of your resources because that's something you know, Jenny and I are always struggling with, like, how do we get these resources to our teachers? And where's one spot they can go? And uh, if you um, even used Anne's tip, I don't know if it was the same tip, Anne put um, like a table of contents at the top of her um, grid and then linked yeah. the different sections into her grid. And I was like, oh, that's genius. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a great, great one-stop shop for showcasing uh, tutorial videos. Yeah, we've done some some of the Cub Scout page, you know, just that kind of landing page. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like kind of welcome. And then all the other topics have just put as links right at that first bit. So it's so easy for them to then just mm -hmm. go from the next one to the next one and just not get lost, you know. I love it. I think that is such a genius idea. I definitely want to uh, start incorporating that into our flip grids. And I think, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, yep. One of yep, my earbuds, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I think that too, sometimes people starting out with Flipgrid can get a little overwhelmed with the grid and the topics and yeah. where, where do I start? Cause it can be massive. It really can. So I loved Anne's tip about that, that table of contents and just being able to yeah. kind of link them to each other because, you know, just keeping it all in one place. And like you're saying, you know, organizing, yeah. keeping it, cause you don't want them to have to go to this grid for this mm -hmm. and this grid, you know, be able to go and, and link it, um, and have it all there. So definitely check out that uh, tweet um, from Ann Cosima today. That was really, really awesome. I'll try and post yeah. it in the comments in just a moment. I'll go find yeah. it. 
Yeah, and yeah. the get the guest feature in uh, Flipgrid's really good as well. To maybe you want to get external speakers as well. Um, so I've got I've got a friend in Scotland who does a lot of uh, television presenting and radio, and he's a he's a stand up comedian as well. So we did a kind of celebrity spotlight where a uh, topic where I got the kids to post questions, and then he just went and watched them all and answered them. So it was really it was really a good way to to engage with somebody that they, they see on the radio and TV, or hear on the radio and see on the TV. Um, and ask them questions, and he could just go on and watch, and then just answer, answer the questions. So it was really, that was a really effective way. So it's like the guest making use of the guest uh, link as well is really good to, to share it with external people. Well, we've been loving um, showing our teachers how to use the shorts camera, where they can just record and screen record and take that video and you know put it wherever they want. So just knowing that you don't even have to create a grid, you don't even have to create a topic. Yeah. Go right there, hit that shorts camera, and record. And then you've got you know a lesson right there. So um, there's so many great options that you can do with Flipgrid. So and it keeps getting better. Like I love that there's like new updates all the time and new updates with Teams and, and you know Minecraft. Yeah. Everything's yeah. changing and updating all the time. So mm -hmm. uh, and let's see. Sarah has a comment. She said, "And being able to share a link to one video specifically for your staff as well as a whole grid has helped us." Mm -hmm. That's a really good tip too. Yeah, that's why I do the shorts videos. So I'm, I'm on a WhatsApp group with my, fr my friends. So I just then kind of record a video and then I can immediately send the link through something like WhatsApp, email. You know, it's just so so quick and easy to do it that way, you know. I also like that you are using it with your scout group. I know we use it at church as well because our families now, all of them, or not all of them, a lot of them are using Flipgrid for distance learning. And so it's easy and they know how to get in and they know how to post the videos. So it really has helped us stay connected as yeah. well. So well, we'll, I haven't it, done it during distance learning with our church, but we did it yeah. a few a little bit ago. But all of the kids well, knew how to use it. One of the things uh, last week we were doing the collector's badge, which was really good. It was a really good way. Flipgrid is a really good thing, tool to use for it because the, the Cubs were able to to film their their collections of things that they had in their bedrooms in their house. Like I've, I'm a bit of a board game geek, so I have a huge collection of board games. So again, when I was introducing the topic, I showed them a, a kind of two minute video of me showing all my board games and seeing which my favourite was. Um, so we've got we've got one boy um, who's got quite complex autism in, in the group, um, and he was his mum filmed him, but she she was she was showing off getting him to show off his um, DC uh, figures that he had, you know. Um, so he had this huge collection of figures, and she was asking him loads of questions. So it's opportunities like that which we probably would never have, have got if it wasn't for the situation we're in just now. Because we may, for that badge, they may have taken a picture, or they may have even just said, "Oh, we've got this," and signed it off with us. Used, they've been forced to use Flipgrid, so Flipgrid has meant that given us this opportunity to do these really cool things, and it was it was so nice to see him um, speaking about his, his figures and why he liked them so much. So we're able mm -hmm. to show that on our on our Teams call, you know. So we we do that we have a once a week Teams call when we have our meeting. Um, so it's great that we can then show the Flipgrid's embedded in Teams, um, I love that. and then we can show and then we can show the um, show the videos at the meeting as well. So that works really well. I love that. I think it's so important. I mean, it really does allow kids to take ownership and share what they love and share their passions. And everyone loves sharing their passions. I think that's a great way to do it. Yeah, totally. All right, Jenny, are you still there or did we lose you? Are you gone? <laughs> <She> gone. <laughs> You're gone. All right, let me try. And um, so, Jenny, I'm going to give you maybe a tip at the bottom. Do you see camera and mic? The little setting cog, the little wheel. You should be able to click that and change your your mic. Sorry, her AirPods went dead. We've used it a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear us either. <laughs> okay. Well, do I? The... <laughs> Oh, good, Jenny. All right, she's I'm going to share my screen. Oh, she's going to get out and come. She'll come back. Yeah, yeah, and she'll jump back in. But I'll go ahead and. She can have one of mine that you may just need to clean up. <laughs> I know. Mine died too today. That's like, I now had to resort to these instead of these. So like, That's why I'm going old school. <laughs> I know. That's what I did too. I was like, I'm not going to be able to not mess this up. Although my headband keeps messing up, but that I won't mess up. Oh, she's back. All right, I'm going to get her back in here. There she is. Yay! Yay. 
And we Technology. thought we were going to not have any issues tonight. Oh, Neil <laughs> says I'm flying solo. Neil, we are, we come as a package. We always say we're one person. <laughs> I was laughing today because we were both watching. We didn't know we were both watching, but we were both watching Matt Miller and Holly Clark on uh, Ditch That Textbook. He had a show going talking about uh, templates and PowerPoint and Google Slides. And Jenny and I both were in it, but I was in as Jenna Lee. She was in as Jenny. So I was commenting and she was commenting, uh, but I didn't see her comments. But anyway, but Matt was like, oh, She's here. Jenna Lee is here. And Holly was like, no, no, they're two people. And I was like, well, actually, we say we're one. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we, we need each other's brains to operate. So this is true. This is true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know. All right. Well, um, I think we've had an awesome conversation. You guys want to share anything else or um, any other aha moments you've had during distance learning? I think for me, it's probably seeing uh, see my colleagues just starting to really engage with technology um, and just embrace it and starting to use and see the benefit of tools like Teams and how it can make you so much more productive uh, and collaborative as well. So I think it's really good that obviously it's not great that we have this pandemic but with that it's getting people to maybe step outside their comfort zone and um, i'm i'm working my way through the minecraft world uh, and uh, the microsoft education center i've maybe needed that push to to do it you know so it's you know trying to make the best best of the situation that we've got and trying to upskill yourself as well Up, upskill yourself but also upskill your your colleagues and your friends and your students as well if you're engaging with them yeah mm-hmm definitely the one thing we've got a lot of at the moment is time you know so time to play around with these new tools time to really get to grips with things you know and i think um i've i've learned how to use redstone in um in minecraft so that's my big <laughs> <laughs> success yeah. it's like, it's like, when, when i've got time to play with this you know in, in terms of trying to really get the grips but um you know so i think that's been a, a real positive of you know of that and the fact as well that the parents some possibly who maybe couldn't see the the power and the potential in some of these tools can see well you know actually i'm able to access all this learning to mm -hmm. you know through this which you know yeah. a few years ago we wouldn't have been able to do so yeah yeah, yeah. i think i think another thing is i've got much more comfortable with video calls always video calls yeah. always felt really strange weird things yeah. but now yeah. I'm, I'm doing so many yeah. that i'm getting used to them um, and the skills have helped as well as helping professionally i've helped socially as well so uh, my friends and I, the, we do the Cub Scouts on a Thursday night and then straight after we have a, a virtual pub in Microsoft Teams. Um, so we, we do things like uh, Kahoot quizzes and we do we show funny YouTube videos uh, on the team as well. So it's a good place to, to meet and, um, you know, and still share and have a... And, what we've also done is things like the, the, the backgrounds. We, we used to go to our local pub uh, but we can't do that anymore. So our backgrounds are now images of the pub. So, <laughs> still feel like we're, so we still feel like we're there. I think so, in Texas, um, that's equal to Mexican food restaurants. Yes. So yes. I'm going to start putting my favorite Mexican food restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, it makes you feel. Yeah. 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 Well, that was there. everybody yesterday with Cinco de Mayo. All of our friends were running out to the restaurants and ordering and getting Cinco de Mayo and Taco Tuesday. So that it was like, Everybody's going crazy. And now our restaurants are opening up a little bit. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Mexican food. We're all like, Mexican food. Oh, right. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, Chris, I hope you saw that comment from Julie where she says that you've been telling us about all these things and all the things you do for ages. And so now that they get to experience um, what you're talking about. So I know we've, I'm sure you all have heard the same thing where teachers say, gosh, I wish I would have listened to you more. Or this is what you were trying to, yes. you know, now I get it. And um, we're really- it, it, used to, it used to be, they always said, I, I wish I had the time. You know, I never have the time. And you can go, well, yeah. now, yeah. now we do. <laughs> Your wish is came true. You have time. <laughs> Neil says he made the local pub in Minecraft and invited the staff to join on the last day of the term. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. That's the whole next level for me. <laughs> I, t I tell you what, James, I'll send you some images in my local pub, right? And you can build it for me. Would that be? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Teamwork, collaboration right here on the Jenna Lee Show. I love it. That's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> All well, right. I know 
it's just been awesome to visit with you guys and hear all the great things that you're doing. And we just, um, you know, and I, I guess I never even said it at the beginning when we started playing the music, so we, like people wondering why are they playing that? But that was just a, a fun night that we had in London where we were singing and walking through the, yeah. what's it called? The underground? Yeah. Yeah, the underground, yeah. yeah. That's how it's called? The, 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 the tube, tube, the tube. Yeah. And we were like yeah. going from the tube and all the different places and we were just singing all the Disney songs. And that was <laughs> all the tube Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so lots and lots of good memories. So we yeah. appreciate you guys and just know that we are better people for knowing you and um, appreciate all of your wisdom and uh, all that you're doing for teachers and your students everywhere. And so uh, we thank you again for being here tonight. And, uh, and on that note, I think both of our countries right now, yeah, I think right now both of our countries have the MIE expert applications open. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would definitely totally, encourage yep. you, if you are watching, go become an MIE expert. This family is amazing. Um, I, I love getting to meet all the different Microsoft experts and users. And then just like this, I mean, we, we, get, we stay in contact with, you know, our friends from the UK all year. And so it's just been a great family. And I will say, c coming to the UK, Jenny and I say it all the time, you guys are the most welcoming people ever. We felt like we knew you from day, which I guess we did on Twitter, know you from day one, but <laughs> it's still, it was a wonderful experience. And definitely yes. we still like family. Yeah, it's life, it's life changing. It just offers, it gives you so many opportunities to connect with people from around the world and you just learn, you learn so much. Every day you learn from, from someone mm -hmm. in the, the MIE yeah. family, you just, you know, you pick up something and it's, you know, it's all small things, but it's brilliant. You, just, you can use them there and then it's great. For sure. Well, we appreciate you guys and thank you so much for spending your time. We know it's late where you are, so we uh, thank you for staying up late and um, we look forward to many more future engagements with you all. And if you need anything from us, you know, just we uh, look forward to seeing. Um, well, we're going to share some of our creations when we get in there to, with Minecraft. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> look forward to that. Yeah, yeah Uncle I, look, I look forward to my pub, James, as well. I look forward yeah. to that. <laughs> I'm going to build some guacamole in a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> well, next week on the show, we're actually going to have next Thursday, we are going to have Holly Clark and Lisa Highfield with us, and they are going to talk about HyperDocs. So how to use Word, and um, they actually have a book that they have written about HyperDocs. So they're going to share with us how we can, because I think it's something that we're not all that familiar with in the Microsoft world. So um, they are super excited, and we're excited to have them on next Thursday. We might even have, we're trying to get, since you know this weekend is a special Mother's Day, we might have a little surprise um, on Monday if we can convince some mothers that we know. <laughs> well, I mean, we're not going to call them out here on Facebook, but... <laughs> So Colleen, we may have Colleen. a little mm -hmm. surprise show on yeah. Monday with our moms. We wanted to bring them in because they're both educators and teachers. So Celine's like, why don't we even have our moms come? So we're going to try to um, put that together for Monday. But in the meantime, we know for sure we're having uh, Holly and Lisa next Thursday. We're super excited about that. And hopefully we'll have a guest appearance with some other lovely ladies on Monday. So thank you guys again. We appreciate you being thank here. Thank you very much. It's pleasure. Thank you both. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, we hope everyone has a great night, and we'll see you later. Take care. Bye. 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 Be safe. Bye. Thank you. Bye.